Today, we're going to show how to get View and React components on the same page side by side and using the same data and nested inside of each other. So what is Astro? So it's focused on content-rich websites, so marketing sites, blogs, that sort of thing. And a lot of the core features are based around that. So it's server first. So if they're not running JavaScript, the page is still going to run. So you get SSR for free. It's incredibly fast and it's really easy to create content. You can use their custom component system or MDX, both of which are really easy to use. But you can also, and this is what we're going to be talking about today, use Vue, React, and other front-end frameworks. And they are going to be full featured and able to connect with each other. How we do this is through the islands architecture. So here we have these different islands, and two of them are interactive. And so what can happen is we load the static HTML for everything, and then these two get rehydrated with JavaScript. And so they become interactive. And there are other options as well. So for example, if this one only works with front-end JavaScript, you can't do it on the server side, then we just won't render it on the server side. And we'll show you how to do that today as well. So we're going to go ahead and create our Astro project. We're going to use yarn create Astro. And it's going to go ahead and get that started for us and then ask us a couple questions. And so we'd like to create a new project. We can name it. So there we go. And we're going to use the recommended best practices. And so it's going to create a couple files for us. And we would like it to install the dependencies. So this is getting everything started for us. It will not install Vue or React yet. We're going to have to do those later, but that should be really quick. All right, and yes, we would like to initialize a Git repository. We do want TypeScript, and we'll go ahead and do strict. And now we're ready. That was super quick. I didn't even fast forward through any of that. So we're going to go to our new Astro demo, and we're going to go to Yarn Dev and see what that looks like. So this is working great. And let's go ahead and see that it is server-side rendered. And so we'll go to our network, we'll reload it, and we'll see that it showed up before any of this other stuff came through. And can see, yep, this is the exact same thing. So fantastic, we have SSR by default. So if you open our project, you'll see that we have a bunch of files here. So we have some config files, we have some VS Code config files. By the way, if you're in VS Code, install Astro, uh, this plugin, this extension. Super useful. So we get this highlighting. And you'll see that we have a HTML-like or React-like uh, format here. And that is all fantastic that they've got a way that you can create components without using an existing JavaScript front end. But we're not going to cover that today. If you want to learn how to create Astro without using Vue or React, you can go to, this is a really great introduction. So you can go to that video. It covers the Astro component system and uh, the super basics. But we're going to be covering Vue and React and how to get those working together. So to get that started, we're going to have to install a couple more things. So to get React into Astro, first, we're going to type in yarn astro add react. And that's going to install what we need. So yes, we're going to add all those packages. And once those are installed, it's going to show us some of the changes it's going to make. So it's going to be changing our config file. And that's fine, changing our TS config as well. And there we are. The React component we're going to use is the example from the state hook documentation. And so we'll go ahead and create a component. We'll just call it counter.tsx and paste that in there. And then we will go to our pages. We will import it. So import it as React counter. 
uh, from component slash counter. And uh, so the issue here is that it's not used. Uh, we'll fix that. And also we need to export default. All right, here we go. And so we can go ahead right after welcome to Astro, we will do react counter. And it's right there. So we can click it and it's actually not working. So what's happening here is it is, if we go to our network tab and see our local host, so it's doing the server side rendering, but it's not rehydrating. And so how we can get that rehydrating is just client load. So we stick that onto our component. And now once we reload, and see it's downloading it here and it's taking a little longer because I have it on fast 3G. So it's purposefully slowing it down. And there we go. Now, before we go further, I wanna do some convenient styling for telling things apart. So we'll go ahead and paste this code that's gonna give us view component, react component, and astro classes. That'll give us some nice labeling. And we're gonna go ahead and use the is global here so that it's going to be used on all the components. So these are scoped by default. As a matter of fact, everything in this first style tag will not show up in any of the other child components. All right, so let's go ahead and use that. Here on main, we will do class astro. And then here we will do class name equals react component. And then we can see that now we can visually tell which component is where. Now let's go ahead and add view. So it's the same command as for React, but we're going to be adding view. So yes, we will install that. And the interesting thing is that it's going to overwrite the compiler option. So it's going to add to this integrations list and then overwrite the compiler option. I actually don't know which one is the correct one when you're using both, but uh, I've had it as both and it doesn't seem to make a difference. All right, so we've got that in. And now we'll go ahead and create a counter.view. And so first we're just gonna put in a little hello so that we can make sure this is working right. So we're gonna import view counter from uh, components counter.view. And here notice that for TSX, we do not put on the .tsx. As a matter of fact, it will uh, throw an error if we do that. Uh, but for the view one, we do want the .view. And here we go. We're going to do view counter. And of course, we have to do the client load. And it should say hello. And we'll go ahead and Go here and paste in the code for our view counter. And we'll see that it works correctly. And we'll want to go ahead and put a div around this with a class of view component. And one really interesting thing here is that it is showing an error here saying, oh, we don't have class. And it's showing there, this is something, I believe it's with Volar, uh, which is the VS Code thing extension for uh, view. But if we do class name, then it's quite happy and it still works. So uh, we're just gonna keep using class name. And with that, we can see that we have view and React working side by side in the same app, in the same page. We can go further than this though. We can actually get them nested inside each other. Although there are some conditions on this. So let's play around with it and see what we can do. So first we're gonna show that you cannot put a React component directly in a view component. If you do that, then you're going to get a big old error. And if we try to reload, you'll see that it's just showing a blank page. So let's go ahead and delete those and reload and apparently we crashed it so yeah let's restart that all right and we're going to create a new component so we'll just call this 
another component dot view. And we're gonna do something super simple and we're just gonna say hello. And then we're gonna go ahead and add that to our view component. So we're gonna import hello from another component and we're gonna put that in and then we'll see it showing up. There we go, so we've got it in there. We'll go ahead and put the class name as view component so we can see visually that they are indeed separate components. And that's great, but this is not actually what we want to accomplish. This is just showing that you can put components from one framework inside the same framework. It would be really limited if you couldn't. Anyways, the way that we can actually put one framework inside of another is by using slots. So here we'll go ahead and create a slot and we'll give it a unique style so that we can tell where the slot is. And then when we save, we can see that we've got this black outline. It's currently not uh, containing anything and we could write some logic to make that black outline go away if there is no uh, content in the slot. But this is just a demonstration. So we'll go ahead and create a slot here. We'll put hey, and then we'll put the React component in there and that loads. So why does it load here? Whereas it didn't load when it was directly in the view component. Well, the trick is that there is actually a layer of Astro in between. So we've got Astro here on uh, the dot Astro file. And so the hey is written in Astro as well as everything here between the view counter and the react counter. And so slots let you go right back at, out to Astro and then come into a different framework. It's like as if your island of JavaScript had a lake in the center of it and then in that lake there was another island. And while we're here, let's look at something interesting. So this is of course working, uh, but if we take off the client load on view counter, what do you think will happen? Well, of course the view counter won't work, but the react counter still will because it has that layer of astro in between. So everything we've done so far has been pretty cool, but now we're to what I think is the most exciting part of the video. And that's because we're gonna get these frameworks talking to each other. So right now we can up the view counter and we can up the react counter but there's no communication. And that's because they're completely different JavaScript frameworks. Uh, we could put something in local storage or something like that, but Astro makes this really easy to do. We're gonna be doing this using the nano stores that Astro provides. So to get started with these, we're gonna have to install some other stuff. So we're gonna need nano stores, the base one, and nano stores view and nano stores react. So let's go ahead and yarn add this and we'll add nano stores react and so those will install real quick and now we can start using them we're going to start by making a new stores folder and we're going to add a count.ts file and here we're going to create an atom so we import atom from nano stores and set the default as zero and export the count constant and then we're going to use that in our counter.view. So right now we have a ref that creates our count constant. We're going to be replacing this with the count from the stores. And so we're going to go ahead and import that count from our store that we created and the use store composable. And so here, instead of doing a ref of zero, we're going to do a use store of the count. And you'll remember the count was set to zero. All right, so we have some errors here because we're assigning two things to count. And so the pattern here is to use a dollar sign. And so we'll replace the dollar sign here and here. And here we can do count.set. 
And so this, the writable atom is the type and it comes with a dot set. And we do see an error here, but reloading makes it go away. So this was just some quirk based on some state we temporarily had it in. So anyways, let's go ahead and make sure this is still working. And yes, it is. And let's go ahead and go to our index page and create a second view counter just to make sure that it's uh, interacting between itself. And so here we hit this one and both of the view counters are going up. So within view, the nano store is working. Now let's go ahead and put the nano star store in React. So like in the view component, we're going to need to import both the view store. Uh, here I think they call it hook and then the count store. And so here, instead of count set count, we will just use the same dollar sign count. And instead of use state, we will do use store and put the count store in there. And of course, we will have to change the references. So here we have dollar sign count and here we have count dot set. And when we go back here, we can see that it is now all connected. So that is the core insight I wanted to share. But before we go, I did want to share another cool trick that Astro lets you do. So we've got client load here, and that means that, so let's go ahead and take a look. So when we load this, we've got this server side rendered, and then it'll show this right before any JavaScript loads. You could turn off JavaScript and it would show this, but you can also interact with it. There are some other options. So there's of course this, where it takes away the interaction. There's also client only, and you have to give it the name of the uh, framework, so view in this case, and we'll go ahead and delete that for now. And here we'll see that it loads, and then it loads in the view component on the client side. So you saw there was a little delay. It also, here in this uh, server side rendered, it's not there at all. And so that can be really useful if you have code that doesn't work well server side, if it needs the browser, or if you're using a library that is not yet server side rendering ready. There's also, so let's go ahead and, oops, let's go ahead and make these load. You can also set it to only load once it's visible. So here we've got the app counter and we'll set client visible. And so what that's going to do is, all right, so we've got all these view counters. And so this is the last piece of content that's loaded, right? And we scroll down. And when we hit here, it loaded more content. It loader, loaded the React counter. And so that is really useful for things that are, uh, you know, they may be further down the page and you, so you don't want to clutter up your initial load. That could be yeah, comments or uh, something farther down in an article. All right, so we've learned a lot about Astro today. And the question in your mind may be, is this something I should use? And I think it would work for a lot of sites. But really, the key use case is when you have a content-heavy site that needs some islands of interaction. So if it looks like this, then yes, you should use Astro. If every single one of these is interactive, then you know you could still use Astro and it would probably be a pretty good experience. But unless you're mixing frameworks, then something like Nixt, Nuxt, Remix, FeltKit, that class of meta framework might be a closer fit to your needs. And that's all for today. Let me know down in the comments what you're using Astro for, as well as what you'd like to learn next.